A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The way of the just is smooth, the path of the just you make level. Yes, for your way and your judgments, O Lord, we look to you. Your name and your title are the desire of our souls. My soul yearns for you in the night. Yes, my spirit within me keeps vigil for you. When your judgment dawns upon the earth, the world's inhabitants learn justice. O Lord, you mete out peace to us, for it is you who have accomplished all we have done. O Lord, oppressed by your punishment, we cried out in anguish under your chastising. As a woman as a woman about to give birth breathes and cries out in pain in her pains, so we are in your presence, O Lord. We conceived and wreathed in pain, giving birth to wind. Salvation we have not achieved for the earth. The inhabitants of the world cannot bring it forth but your dead shall live, their corpses shall rise. Awake and sing, you who lie in the dust, for your dew is a dew of light, and the land of shades give birth. Verbum Domini. From heaven the Lord looks down on the earth, You, O Lord, abide forever, and your name through all generations. You will arise and have mercy on Zion, for it is time to pity her, for her stones are dear to your servants, and her dust moves them to pity. The nations shall revere your name, O Lord, and all the kings of the earth your glory. When the Lord has rebuilt Zion and appeared in his glory, when he has regarded the prayer of the destitute and not despised their prayer. Let this be written for the generation to come, and let this future creatures praise the Lord. The Lord looked down from his, bo- from his holy height. From heaven he, be- he beheld the earth to hear the groaning of the prisoners, to release those doomed to die. Lexio Santi Evangelii Secundo Mateum. Jesus said, Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart, and you will find rest for yourselves. For my yoke is easy, my burdened light. Verbum Domini. Jesus uses this word rest and 
to the Jewish people of that time that would remind them of the Sabbath rest. This was at the heart of Jesus' differences with the religious officials at that time. They're always arguing about it, it seems like, at least in certain parts of the Gospels, that Jesus is butting heads with them because they're saying, you can't do that on the Sabbath. You, you're not able to do, to heal people. So Jesus' dispute with them is not simply about interpretation of the Torah, of the scriptures, but about his very person. So his divine identity, Jesus, of Jesus, that can justify his saying that in him there is something greater than the temple greater than the Sabbath of the Jews. Jesus' prayer to the Father happens right before this reading in Matthew 11. And just after, in Matthew 12, there's a dispute over the Sabbath once more. So this gives that context to these very beautiful, consoling words of Jesus. I will give you rest. You will find rest for yourselves. Jesus, in Matthew 11, 20 and following, gives thanks to his Father because all things have been delivered to him. He is divine because he says, no one knows the Father except the Son and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. So because he's God, everything he does flows from that divine source. He can speak with the authority of God who established the Sabbath. Jesus is the one who can give that true Sabbath rest for our souls. In the third commandment of the Decalogue, the Ten Commandments, that recalls the holiness of the Sabbath. It says the seventh day is a Sabbath of solemn rest, holy to the Lord. The Sabbath also recalls creation. In six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, all that is in them. And the Lord rested on the seventh day because the Lord blessed that Sabbath day and hallowed it. Scripture also attributes to the Sabbath, the Lord's day, a memorial of Israel's liberation from bondage in Egypt. I quote, you shall remember that you were a servant in the land of Egypt and the Lord your God brought you out from there with mighty hand and outstretched arm. Therefore the Lord your God commanded you to keep the Sabbath day. So the gospel reports many events, many incidents when Jesus was accused of violating the Sabbath law. But Jesus never fails to respect the holiness of that day and gives it its authentic, its authoritative interpretation, its fulfillment. The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. So the compassion of Jesus that he declares the Sabbath is for doing good rather for doing harm, for saving life rather than killing. The Sabbath is a day of the Lord of mercy, the Lord of life, a day to honor God. The Sabbath, the Son of Man, Jesus says, is Lord even of the Sabbath. So the day of the resurrection, the Lord's day, from the earliest time has been understood as that fulfillment of the Jewish Sabbath. Jesus who rises from the dead on the first day of the week. And Christ's Passover Sunday fulfills that spiritual truth of the Jewish Sabbath that and announces man's eternal rest in God. So Sunday, recalling the Lord's resurrection, which frees us from slavery to sin and death, which affects in us a new creation, reminds us of the primacy of God and creation. So it's the Easter returning each week, every Sunday, celebrating Christ's victory, his, the fulfillment of creation in him, the dawn of that new creation and grace. So that's the reason we celebrate 
the Sunday Eucharist, looking forward with, with Christ in our hearts to that last day when Christ will come in glory. So the resurrection is really the confirmation of all of Christ's works, his teaching, his proof of his divine authority, that he is Lord of the Sabbath, that the rest that we all look for is found in him. Sunday is that day of rest in a special way, a day of praise and worship of God who redeems us, freeing us from sin and death by the resurrection of Christ from the dead. 